guys. So today's video is going to be a tip that can be useful to you to help you get better at jiu-jitsu. And it can also be useful to help you with motivation in some cases. But now, on the surface, it's going to seem disrespectful to some degree. I'll explain why it's not. And it's also going to go against some of the warm and fuzzy motivational stuff that you might see out there. So the other day I was getting onto the mat, getting ready to teach and train with my guys like always, right? And one of the students that I have is an accomplished college wrestler. He's also a blue belt no-gi world champ. And when I stepped on the mat, he said to me the same thing that he says every day now, which is, Chewy, I'm coming for you. Every single day he says this to me. Sometimes he'll, he'll even word it, Chewy, your days are numbered because I'm coming for you. And when he said this, you know, we're all laughing and he's laughing and smiling. And we're all cutting up. It's a good time. But he's dead serious when he says this. Now, some people would take this as disrespect. I didn't. I look at him and I joke around and I'll say, you know, as you should, right? Or I'll, sometimes if he says that my days are numbered, I'm like, yes, they're numbered. They are numbered, but I've got a few left. But the reason why I don't take this as disrespect from him is because I did the same thing when I was a white belt and when I was newer. And I've done the same thing throughout my whole jiu-jitsu career, which is I find people to measure up against and I shoot for them. Right, and I gun for the, I gun for them. Like my first coach, when I first started jujitsu, I get on the mat. The guy was so good at jujitsu compared to me. I thought he was so amazing, and he was the best possible person I could roll with at the time. And so I figured, you know, if I could simply get as com get competitive with him, not even beating him, but if I could just get competitive to where we would go tit for tat, then that would mean I'm pretty damn good. And so when I was on the mat, that was what I was always focused on. I was always focused on beating him and trying to get better against him. Now, I would always, you know, try to roll with the other students just the same and everything else, but I was always so focused on those roles because he was my he was my gold standard for my jiu-jitsu. And I remember when our role, when we would roll together, I mean, most of the time it was a, just an absolute obliterating smash fest for him. But every now and then I'd get these little glimpses of hope for, for the future, right? I might go for a sweep and I might get him off balance. I might make him post for a second. And then he'd be like, oh, I made him post. Now he might afterwards smash my face into the ground. But the fact that I made him get off balance for just a moment, that was like, that was a win in my book. Later on in a couple years later, I was able to go tit for tat with him and I was very competitive with him and I could beat him sometimes and he'd beat me sometimes. A few years later when I moved to a new gym, I remember training at that new, the new gym and the new coach that I had, one of the coaches, had an amazing guard. I mean, his guard was sick. He had a good jiu-jitsu game all around, but his guard was just downright nasty. And I remember that when we would roll, I pretty much just got arm or triangled over and over and over again from that position. So I figured that if I could just be able to be competitive with my guard passing with his guard, then that meant that for most people I could pass their guard, no problem. And so that was my goal. Every time I rolled with him, I wanted to learn how to pass his guard. I want to learn how to beat him in that position because if I could do that, that, that says something about my game. And again, very similar fashion where it started off rough, but over time, these little glimpses of, of positive forward momentum would come in where maybe I would like cut across and I would almost pass, but then we'd have to re-guard wasn't a guard pass, but it was an almost, there was an almost a movement there. And those were motivating to me because I'm judging myself against this person. Now let's be clear because this is where I, I don't want to give you guys the wrong idea. During doing this type of thing, I'm not judging myself or comparing myself to the person, right? I'm not saying, man, this person got a black belt in five years and I'm still six and I'm a purple belt. I'm not looking into them and saying they got a gold medal at this tournament. I only got a silver. I'm not comparing myself against them. What I'm comparing is my performance to them versus my performance against them in a previous time. It's not a comparison of who I am, but something I'm doing. There's a big difference there. A lot of times when people are doing things, especially in jiu-jitsu, I've heard this all the time and I, I tell people not to say it, is you'll see people where they will fall short, they'll fail, they'll mess up, whatever. And instead of saying, man, I had a bad performance, they'll say, man, I suck at jiu-jitsu. Or, man, I suck. Whatever. The wrong thing to say. It's not, don't take it a personal. It's not a personal thing. It's merely, you did something wrong, right? That's the difference. That's why I say it's, it seems maybe against the warm and fuzzy stuff because they say not to compare yourself. Well, we're not comparing. We're comparing our performance to another performance. And I've read about doing this idea from multiple high-level athletes and biographies I've read. The college wrestler that I was talking about, he used it in college wrestling. Even students like mine, Adam. You know, with the, the spirit fingers. He did this with um, 
one of our guys, Rich, he openly said it when Rich got his black belt. He was like, this was the guy that I was always chasing after because he was like the guy that I wanted to beat because we're around the same size, but Rich was a, a level above him. And so he was always trying to compare his abilities against Rich. And that's how he was judging himself. And so I encourage you guys in your gym, try to find someone that you can roll with on a regular basis that often that isn't too big or small in comparison to you. You know, you don't want to say like <laughs> my, you know, you don't want to be like 130 pounds and be like, am my, the guy that I'm chasing is the 280 pound like power lifter. You want to try to find at least someone comparable to size and someone that you can roll with often. And then what you do is you chase after them. You get not out of disrespect, not at, not to flex on them, right? But you're doing it so that this way you can get a measure of your game. How am I doing, right? I was able to get them off balance last week, and last week they triangled me six times, and this time they only triangled me once. Like You can see these improvements because you're rolling with that same person over and over again. And there will be ups and there's downs, but again, you don't take them personally. You only think about how your performances are going in sort of an aggregate, in a trend over time. And it's been really useful to me. So I encourage you to do that. Find your, essentially your white rabbit in the gym to chase after. Find someone that's the same size, and just a little, you know, a skill level above you, so this way you can judge yourself and uh, your your performances against them. So just an idea, something that we were kind of talking about in the gym the other day. Figured I'd share it with you guys because it's been useful to me and a lot of my students. And uh, I'll talk to you guys next time.